Welcome guys, this is one of the most requested video I ever got. How to improve your skills, to become a pro player, or how to get better at PUBG Mobile. If you ask this question to anyone they would just say three things. Step 1, get the fastest internet connection as possible, that turns your ping to 0 milliseconds. And step 2, get the most powerful device in the world, that can run PUBG at 90 FPS, aka iPad Pro, so you can see your 0KD in 90 FPS. And step 3, play Claw, now you'll become pro player. Jokes aside, this is the fastest way to get better at this game. But is it really true? Having a good device will actually make you a better player. I mean yes, but actually no, it does not make you a better player immediately, but it sure can help you to be better than before. For example, high-end devices will enable you to achieve the fastest reflexes as possible, or fastest reaction, meaning that you can react to your enemies a lot faster, whereas in mid-range devices you will not able to achieve the same level of reflexes as you would in the high-end device, but you can still make it up for that by using your skills. So the device may have a huge impact on your gameplay, but you can match it up for that by utilizing your skills, which we will be going through in this video, so in order to get better at this game, you'll need to learn few things. The first one is obviously is to improve your aim, or aiming skills, but not just that you'll also need to improve the recoil controlling, along with your reflexes or reaction time, as well as your movements, which is also really important and other things as followed, such as game sense, which kinda includes experience and better decision making or better thinking ability on how well do you handle panic situations. But most importantly how to get the most out of your device, even if you have a low-end device or the mid-range ones. Let's start with the aim, aiming is what you do all the time, but doing it with best accuracy is what you need to learn in order to improve your aim, along with spray controlling. This is divided into three different categories, close range, mid range, and the long range. Most of your fights will be taken place in close range and it's very high risk zone, because if you mess up in close range, you'll get directly knock and finished immediately. Whereas in mid range or long range, you can get away from your enemies, but in close range you can't, so that's why you need to improve your close combat skills first. The fastest way to get better at close range is by playing a lot of team death matches. But not just TDMs, you can also play domination in the arena, as well as the war in arcade. This is where you can rapidly improve your aim, recoil controlling and movement. And I recommend disabling aim assist when playing team death matches, so you would improve even further, later enable aim assist when playing classic matches. And play as aggressively as possible, try hard by pushing into the enemy's base and show them what you got. And when you play aggressively you will move a lot, which will improve your movements, but also try to focus on improving your other movements, such as crouching, jumping, and drop shot. And try strafing left and right to dodge the bullets also known as jiggle movement. And the next most important thing is leaning, leaning is something that is always useful at any range. I have seen a lot of players come out of their cover completely in order to shoot at their opponents, example like this. I mean this is okay when there is only one single enemy, but when there are multiple enemies you shouldn't be doing this. Instead, use the lean function to peek either left or right direction depending on the situation. When you lean out from your cover this is what your enemy sees, it's insanely powerful as it will make you way harder to hit. And the next thing is to improve your hip fire accuracy. Everyone has their own ways of practicing hip fire, but if you're a gyroscope player, then the best way to learn how to use gyro for hip firing is by setting up your ADS sensitivity to 1%, so now you'll fully rely on gyro. And now practice the new 1% ADS sensitivity in TDMs to understand how it will help you a lot. I already made a video on this topic. If you want to learn more about it, check that out link is in description as well as on the top right corner of your screen. But if you're not a gyroscope player, then don't worry you can still learn, but you'll need to do a lot more practice. And here is a tip to improve hip fire even further, always aim for the head level, or at the neck area, because headshots will do some critical damage to your opponents, and also try to maintain your crosshair at enemy's head level, even when the enemy is hiding behind a cover, so you can quickly get an instant headshot when they come out of their cover. You need to practice all these things in team death matches first, in order to create muscle memory, or reflex, and then later you can implement them into your classic gameplay sometimes you don't even realize that you're doing all these things without knowing. 
For example, around one year ago, I spent so many hours playing team death matches and focusing on improving my hip fire and crosshair placement, and I'm glad I did that, so now whenever I see an enemy, my crosshair instantly goes on top of the enemy's head. This is what I would call muscle memory and reflexes, and this can be improved over time by practicing. So I would recommend playing TDM at least 30 minutes to 1 hour in the beginning, and later as you get better you could spend less time in TDM like only up to 10 to 20 minutes, sometimes team death matches can be boring, so you can play other modes like domination and war mode as an alternative. I mean I still spend at least 10 minutes each day in TDM in order to warm up before playing classic, and sometimes when I play a really bad, I would just play TDMs continuously until I make any improvements. And the next thing is about pre-fire, pre-firing is a great skill to learn, in some situations it has a huge impact on your close combat skills, and the more you use it, the better you will understand about it. The way how most people use pre-fire is when the enemy is holding back, and you're pushing in, do it with a pre-fire, and if they peek during pre-fire, they most likely end up dying in that pre-fire. And the other one is prediction pre-fire, for example, let's say you're expecting your opponent to come from this direction, so you pre-aim or scope in and start pre-firing and hope that your enemy jumps into your pre-fire and dies. This one totally depends on your skills and how good you will able to identify the footsteps. So the pre-firing skills will improve along with other skills. Alright, let's move on to the mid-range, this is where you usually start spraying at enemies, so you'll need to learn how to control recoil, you can't actually learn mid-range in team death matches, so for this, you'll need to go to training grounds, and pick up your favorite weapon, and get the maximum ammo as possible, and climb up on top of this hill. And from here start spraying at the targets, so this is how I learned how to spray, and how to control the recoil, but you can always come up with your own way to learn how to control recoil, I already made a video explaining how to control recoil and sensitivity and all kind of stuff about it, so make sure to check that out, link is in description. And for the long range, it's also quite similar to mid range, so you'll need to learn it along with mid range and training grounds, and whenever spraying at long range targets, always remember to use crouch, as it reduces your recoil by up to 20% depending on your weapon. And the sniping and single tapping will also need to be learned in training grounds, so spend as much time as you can in order to learn in the beginning and play sniper training in arcade, it will help you a lot with sniping. Anyway now let's move on to the next topic, movement. Movement is something that everyone underestimates, but it's as important as aim and others, and you don't want to be like this player, running into a wall in the middle of a gunfight. So how do you improve your movements, during the looting phase you'll move around a lot, so this is where you need to pay attention and start practicing your precision movements. Move around in the buildings perfectly without touching a single wall, and also don't get stuck in any objects when looting, running into a wall or failing to quickly navigate into a building is often be the reason you lose a fight, and it will significantly slow you down. And also try to create spatial awareness while you're moving around, for example, I can go through this door without even looking at it, by just using spatial awareness. And movement also includes crouching, jumping, proning, and strafing left and right to dodge bullets, so I already made a dedicated video on all these things in a more detailed way, which is also in the description, make sure to check it out. Now to the next one which is game sense, but what is game sense, it's more like common sense but in games, and it takes really long time to improve it, the game sense will help you create strategies, and the players have to think of tactics and make a quick decision, on how they should attack their opponents, you can think of your game sense as your game IQ, having good game sense enables you to beat other players that have an advantage on you, but you can outsmart and outplay them by using your game sense. So how do you improve your game sense? It totally depends on your ability to process information and the situation around you, and then use that information to make the most effective play. Usually you can improve this just by naturally playing the game, but it would take really really long time, so the other way is to watch professional players and learn from them by making note of what they do and why they do things the way they do. So let me give you an example on how you can use your game sense. So this is an early game, and there is an enemy next to my building, and I can hear that player coming upstairs, so I pre-aimed at this door, because that player will most likely to enter in this room to loot, and as soon as I started hearing louder footsteps sound, I started my pre-fire, and luckily the enemy got into my pre-fire. So this is how I use my game sense. 
Anyway let's move on to the last topic, how to get most out of your device, well for this one you most probably heard of GFX tool, which helps you to unlock higher frame rates in your device. So why do you need to use this, if your phone only supports up to medium frame rates, then you're at massive disadvantage, because most of the guns shoot slower in that FPS. Here is an example of M249 in 90 FPS, and high FPS, and medium FPS, and medium FPS shoots extremely slowly, we all know 90 FPS has the fastest firing rate for some of the weapons. So this is why I highly recommend you to use GFX tool to unlock better FPS option. And also if you're playing in medium frame rates, most of the weapons like M416 and AKM shoot slower in that FPS option. This is a huge problem for low-end device players, so that's why using a GFX tool will fix some of that problems. So install the most downloaded GFX tool from Play Store with highest reviews as possible, and then now open that app, select your version, and now in the resolution, select the lowest resolution as possible, and then now unlock FPS. Suppose if your phone only supports up to medium FPS, then you could unlock high FPS, but don't even try to unlocking 60 FPS your device can't handle it. So only unlock one higher frame rate option, for example, if your device supports only up to medium, unlock high FPS, and if your device only supports up to high FPS, then unlock ultra FPS, similarly if your device supports ultra FPS, then unlock 60 FPS, so this is how you should be unlocking FPS, instead of going directly to 60 FPS, as it could cause overheating and more lag. And here is the rest of the settings for GFX tool. I would put every graphic settings to lowest as possible, in order to get more FPS. There is a lot of rumors saying that using GFX tool could get you banned, so use it at your own risk, I personally use GFX tool when I had an Android phone, I always select lowest graphic settings in order to get more stable FPS, I know the graphics looks really terrible but, it's always a better choice to sacrifice some your graphics, in order to get more FPS, as it can improve your gaming experience by a lot. Because FPS can change a lot of things, like firing rate of a weapon, and recoil controlling, and damage output, and a lot of other things. And the next thing is your internet connection or MS or ping. I never had any issues with ping, because my Wi-Fi or internet was really good, I always get 20 MS since the beginning of the game, if your ping is below 100 then it's good, but if it's below 50, then it's really really good. And I know most of you use mobile data, to play PUBG I sometimes I do play on mobile data, but I still get a good ping, here is a tip, to get the best ping as possible, go to training grounds or cheer park. And now roam around in your entire home, and try to find a certain place, that gives you lowest ping or lowest milliseconds, maybe near windows, but for me personally I always find that balcony gives me the lowest ping as possible. It changes from over 100 ms to around 30 to 40 ms in balcony, so this is something that you can do to improve your internet connection by finding the best network signals in your home. But doesn't matter whether you have a good ping or a bad ping, desync will always happen, so you can't do anything about it. If you made it this far, comment 69 and join my Discord server, we have over 20,000 members in my server, so you can find new teammates and make new friends or enemies, link is in description. And also if you use Instagram make sure to follow me on it, I post short video clips almost every day. Anyway, that's all I got for this video I hope you learned something new. If you did hit the like button and subscribe for more upcoming videos like this. And see you guys in the next video, enjoy my bot gameplay. Walking around in the circle of life Doing a thing I know Walking the same way The time of time With the same time so But do you ever try To put it outside Put it up in your mind But do you ever try To up on the left side Put it up in your mind
Enemies ahead. What do you ever try?